What is all this? This must be fog of war or something. I can't see anything in here. What was that? I better get out of here. Hi there, and welcome back to another Roll20 Crash Course tutorial. Uh, my name is Mac, and I'll be taking you through a tutorial on how to use the dynamic lighting feature in Roll20 for your next tabletop RPG session. Dynamic lighting is a feature often seen in video games, especially MOBAs, CRPGs, and real-time strategy games. For our virtual tabletop, it can provide a really immersive experience as your players explore an area or a dungeon in Roll20. The Roll20 Fog of War system has seen significant changes as of late. A few years back, it was simply known as Fog of War, and it operated something like this. So when you click over here in SDM and you click Hide Areas, it'll prompt you and ask you if you want to turn on Fog of War. You can say yes, and then it'll make everything dark essentially like this. Then if you want to reveal areas for your players to see, you can use the click and drag selection like this, or you can use the polygon reveal, which is also nice for um, weird shaped rooms or where you just want to reveal a specific spot. You can click all the points that you want to go and you right click and it will reveal that area. So you could potentially reveal corner sections or um, areas at the end of a hallway, for example, and all of it can be done in this format. The next step was Advanced Fog of War, uh, along the track working towards the dynamic lighting that we have now. I believe it is in some places still available. For example, when I was revealing the area before, it allowed me to turn on Advanced Fog of War. It might be a, a free feature now. I'm not really sure. It's gone through so many changes that it's hard to keep track of, to be honest. The current system is called Dynamic Lighting, which functions similar to Fog of War, but it updates live for each player. And as a collective, it allows a DM to create walls that cannot be seen through, and fixtures in the map environment, along with the player tokens, can emit light and have specific vision settings. I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to set it up for your own game. And this is now known as Updated Dynamic Lighting. The, the names kind of continue to change as things progress, but this is what will be used primarily only if you have a Plus or a Pro account, so keep that in mind. If you have a free account as a DM, you will be unable to use this feature. Firstly, like I just said, you need to have an upgraded version of Roll20, either Plus or a Pro, and you can see that in your game settings or on your account page. Then you'll need to make sure your game is set up for it. You can check this in the game settings of My Games. Under the game default settings right here. It shows you dynamic lighting and updated. This is just the defaults for when you would set up a token. You can turn vision to be always on if you'd like. And this will be set up for, I believe, every page that you start a new. Otherwise, when you make a new page, you will have to go in and adapt it every single time. Now, to set up dynamic lighting when you're inside the game, you want to go to your page toolbar, click on the settings, and make sure dynamic lighting in the page settings tab is turned on. Then you can hit save, and it should apply it to everything. So now, you can kind of go, go through it and decide all the specifics that you want. Um, I like explorer mode, it just means that when the players go through an area, it will re reveal it for them, and then when they move away from it, it will kind of save what was there, but not update any tokens or anything that was there. Um, daylight mode is good for when you're in a outdoor environment and you want some kind of light distortion, or let's say you're in a building during the daytime, you can turn this on and then all the light from the outside will actually filter in through points that you decide. Um, I also recommend turning on update when token drop. The reason being is that when a player clicks on their token, they can physically click and drag it around the entire map and they'll be able to reveal things without you knowing and then they'll be able to put it back where it was before. With this setting, when you click and drag a token to move it, it will bring it to a spot and when they drop it, then it will reveal what they see. Um, I don't know why you would not have it on, I guess just to save power, but honestly I highly, highly recommend turning it on all the time. 
now that you have dynamic lighting turned on, you need to set up your map accordingly in order to use it properly. And you do that by drawing in areas that you want light to be blocked. You draw those lines on a special layer called the dynamic lighting layer. So you click on that and then now you can draw, usually it's drawing with polygons and lines. And I highly recommend using either a bright blue maybe or a red for where they can't see. And if you're doing this manually, you have to click all the points that you want to be blocked by light. So I'm going to click on the inside of each of these walls so that this entire area is blocked from being seen through. So you just kind of go through like that. When you're done, when you're done selecting, right click and it'll deselect it and it'll place it on the map. So I'm going to do the, just this little section here to kind of show you as an example. Um, if you want it to be a bit better too, click on the outside edge as well. And that way they'll be able to see the wall artwork at least, but they won't be able to see past it. So there, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do that. If you want to set up a door, I would recommend drawing another line, but using a different color, such as orange or something. You can draw it across like this. Uh, make sure it finishes all the way as well and right click. So now there's a little door blocking that. And you'll kind of see what happens when I reveal that later. So I have this set up now so that when these characters have vision, they won't be able to see through the red lines. So now if I go back to the object token layer, there, that disappears and that won't be seen by the players. However, right now, these tokens have no vision, so they cannot see anything. Okay, so now I'm going to set up vision for these tokens. So let's say this is an elf. So I'm going to right click the token. Actually, I'm just going to click the settings. I'm going to go to dynamic lighting and give them vision. So now this character token has vision. Um, I'm going to give them night vision because I'm going to pretend they're an elf. And I'm going to give them 60 feet of dark vision. Perfect. That's all you need to do. You can tint it in a certain way. Like let's say they're a tiefling and they have a red dark vision. You can give it a red tint. Um, you can give it a different effect for night vision. Like let's say they have dim light in dark vision. Um, 30 feet start. There. So that might work. I don't know. I'm going to go none for now. Okay, um, you can, so yeah, so now this, this character, now you can see the area that's revealed, this is what they can see. They can see 60 feet in the dark, you can see that it's blocked right here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit just to make that a bit easier to see. So you can see there, um, their vision extends to the end of the room where the red bars are, and when I move it, you can see that vision updates, and now they can see into this next area. Just like that, great. However, this other character can't see. They're a human, they don't have dark vision. So what you can do, let's say the player decides to light a torch. You can right click, you can, don't right click their token. Click the settings on the token, go to dynamic lighting. First, you need to give them vision. I would recommend making this a token default at the beginning in your game settings. Then what you wanna do is you, I believe torches emit bright light for 20 feet. And then they emit low light for another 40 feet. And da -da -da -da, I'm gonna click save. And they should be emitting light, I believe. Directional lights, advanced. Okay, so now I'm going to switch over to the player and see if this looks how I want it to be. This is a good to kind of do to kind of prep it and make sure that it's working properly. Okay, so I believe I can't see anything because I'm not assigned to one of these tokens. So I'm gonna do that really quick. I'm gonna switch over. Uh, you have to make sure that, I'm going to control, you have to make sure that they're controlled by the person. If they're controlled by the person, it'll give them vision. If the token is not controlled by one of your players, they will have no vision like you just saw. So I'm going to rejoin as a player again. Now both of these characters are mine, as roll 20 recognizes them. And now I have vision. When I move my character, I can see that the room is updating. And there we go. And then when I move this character as well, you can, you'll see the dim, dimming feature. So let's see if I can get it to go here. So see, it dims out all the way to 40 feet. I believe that's 40 feet. Yeah, about 40 feet of dim. Um, and then 20 feet is bright light. So that's how you can make those effects kind of happen. And now they can explore through the dungeon and see what denizens they come across. One thing I do want to mention um, as a shout out is that the Roll20 Marketplace adventures are really exceptional. They do cost money, you do have to pay for them. However, the really, really nice thing is that every single map is set out automatically with dynamic lighting so you don't have to do anything yourself it's already drawn out if you want to use dynamic lighting yourself that's totally cool 
Um, it just, ha just takes a little bit of prep work to get it to work properly on your own maps, um, but the effect can be really rewarding for you and your players, especially for immersion. I would definitely recommend it on adventures that involve a lot of dungeon crawling, such as Dungeon of the Mad Mage. That one takes care of so many things for you. Uh, if you're ever keen on running it, I highly, highly recommend it um, in terms of buying it from the marketplace. It's kind of an, a strange adventure in and of itself, but um, if you're intending to run it, I would really, really encourage you to purchase the marketplace version to save you a lot of time and effort um, making dynamic lighting and getting all the maps and monsters ready. So that's the video on dynamic lighting and fog of war in Roll20. I hope this helps you out and I hope that it improves your game for you and your players. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave one in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe if you have not yet. Uh, I hope to see you soon and I hope your games go exceptionally well. Uh, have a good day and be safe.